This is Eagle Al, and today I will be talking about Jalen Hurts. Yeah, he's ready to work. Also, AJ Brown sends a strong message on his IG for 2024 season. And lastly, we're going to talk about Jordan Malata speaking on a dysfunction in Philadelphia. But let's get straight into it. All right, so before we get straight into the topics today, our friend, our guy, Hassan Reddick, is starting to build up some steam. So there's reports out there that the Atlanta Falcons has some interest in Hassan Reddick. And man, he's going to draw interest. Hassan Reddick is 29, so he's he's in his prime, but he tours the end. And it'd be interesting if we are able to trade him, what we would get from him. Will we get like a mid-round, third, fourth round pick? Will we get a player in the pick? Um, Again, it will be interesting if Hassan Reddick, you know, gets some trade value out there. I hope he don't. I hope we pull a Darius Slay or he pull a Darius Slay. Just test in the market, see what he can get and take a, you know, a, a somewhat of a discount coming back to Philadelphia. Because again, I get the Philadelphia Eagles priorities. We handle in the office. Like, it is what it is. I, I just got to call a spade a spade. Devontae Smith is going to get paid. Landon Dickinson is going to get paid. And they technically homegrown. Yes, Hassan Reddick is from Philadelphia, but the Eagles did not draft Hassan Reddick. So, that just is what it is. That's what, how we do. How we'd like to see his draft picks work. And honestly, Devontae Smith, top-tier receiver, Landon Dickinson, what you could say, top five guard in this league so hey man he, he got to do what he got to do as far as how we rose man sometimes we got to cut the core on the on the good one sometimes if necessary you know hopefully Hassan Reddit finds his way back in Philadelphia and you know Atlanta Falcons don't give us a trade we just can't you know we, we just can't say no to hopefully that don't happen all right, and also before we get into the topics, Jason Kelsey. This is going to be an interesting topic until he announced that he's retired. So he went on a, a big podcast, I believe that's with Shaq, and this is what he had to say as far as retiring. Retired now, right? The Pro Bowl this year. Congratulations to both. Growing up was there. As you see, in a couple of weeks, we will hear. We will hear that Jason Kelsey retired or he's coming back. So we will see what he do and, you know, hopefully he come back, you know, still an all pro, still a pro bowler. Jason Kelsey is still that guy. So again, hopefully he come back. All right. So let's get into the topics today. Uh, let's talk about AJ Brown, man. AJ Brown is uh, a phenomenal guy. He's a phenomenal guy. And he had this to say on his IG. Soon as the Super Bowl was over, this is what he got up in the morning to do. The hunt is on. No matter if you running or you hunting, you better be fucking running. A new season. As you see, we hunting. We hunting. 2024 season. Oh, yeah. Eagles are hunting, man. He putting in that work. You see that? What? 23, 24 minutes of running? That's insane. So, AJ Brown, look, he wants it. He wants it. His attitude is totally different. Um, probably the players feel like the fans, they was robbed because of the coordinators. You know, to get 11 wins with bad coordinators, that say something about a talented team. As you see, the 49ers got everything put together. That's why they was able to go far. Even the Chiefs, for the most part, got everything put together. Coaching is just as important as the players. You can have the greatest players, but if you don't got the right coaches to put them in the right position, only so far they can go. As you see, J uh, Lane Johnson, a lot of these dudes, even Jason Kelsey, Brenton Covey, they all said it like, at some point we got figured out and our coaches, they not saying this, this is me, but our coaches never adjust. That just is what it is. But now you got Kellen Moore. Now you have uh, Vic Vangio. These are guys that have been in the league for a long time. It's nothing that's going to surprise them. If they need to adjust, they will. They simply will. So um, hopefully, you know, we, we can get far with these guys. And speaking of coaching, let's talk about Jordan Mulata. Jordan Mulata had to say this about Nick Sirianni and the coaching. 
point from a uh, Nick Sirianni standpoint, uh, the awareness that he has to, you know, to, it takes a lot of accountability, man, to, to be able to give the reins to somebody. I mean, I understand that, you know, what, what he did wasn't, wasn't good enough this year. Uh, what players did wasn't good enough. Uh, I will always take blame uh, from a player standpoint because it is a 50-50 game. Coaches got to put the players in the positions. We didn't do that enough. And then when the coaches did, the players didn't execute. So it's a 50-50 blame. Uh, maybe we did become very predictable. Uh, but this is this is all part of learning. This is all part of growing. Uh, and excited to see where Kellen takes this offense next year, next season. All right, so he just confirmed everything we was thinking. It was some dysfunction. He believed it was 50-50. It was 50% of the players and 50% of the coaches. And he said it, it takes a lot for Nick Sirianni to basically give up that offensive play caller and basically give it to Kellen Moore because, again, the, the coaches just didn't get it right. And I believe they gave the same proposition to um, Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson said, no, that's why we let him go. But Nick Sirianni, you know, he took a look at the season, like probably like, yeah, we messed up. Let's do it this way because it, it worked. You no, know, it got us to the Super Bowl with Shane Steichen when Nick Sirianni and these dudes were like, look, I'm going to give Shane Steichen a play call and let's see how far we can go. And we went as far as we can to the Super Bowl. Maybe it worked with Kellen Moore. Like, you know what? I'm just be the head coach CEO. I get my input here and there, but I'm going to let the experienced guys do what they have to do. I think it was too much for Nick Sirianni, especially a guy that's not really a play caller like that. Have one, two year guys. He need experienced guys like Shane Stack had been in the league for a while. Uh, Jonathan Gannon, not really too much, but you've seen the inexperience the first year as far as the defense with Jonathan Gannon, and they got better. But the thing was Sean Desai and Jonathan Gannon, the players actually like Jonathan Gannon. I don't think they like Sean Desai or even Matt Patricia. So, um, But Vic Vangio is an experienced guy. So experience on offense, experience on defense. And again, it took a lot of humility for Nick Sirianni to give that up. I mean, hey, shout out to Nick Sirianni, uh, Jordan Malata, a lot of these players keeping it real. Obviously, they couldn't say that while they're in the locker room because then, you know, players from other teams would have picked up on them cues, like something's going on, even though everybody and their mama knew that something was going on. But now they can actually see it. Like, yeah, it was, you know, a little something, something with the locker room. And the truth is coming out. Truth is coming out, man. All right, so let's talk about Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts, this article was written by John McMullen. Shout out to him. And Jalen Hurts has some things to say about the upcoming season and how he's working. But let's go over this you know, little quote that I like about Jalen Hurts. All right, so this is what Jalen Hurts had to say. As the leader and quarterback of this team and franchise, this is the opportunity to grow. This is the opportunity to take the next step towards what we desire and what we want to be is going to take everybody. And that's something I believe in. I believe in everyone here. I like that by Jalen Hurts. It's showing growth. Showing growth by him. He said, it's time to get back to work. The season is over. So, yes, it's definitely time to get back to work. A little soon, but it's time to get back to work. And I ain't running from anything. Shout out to Jalen Hurts, man. Not running from nothing, not running from the criticism. That's him responding to criticism. He's not running from it. He not. He's ready to work. And like he said, it's a little early than I expected because, you know, Jalen Hurts' goal is to always go to the Super Bowl. But I, I got to put in the work. That's what he's saying. I got to put in the work to make this team better. You see what AJ's doing. Devontae Smith even talked about it here and there. A lot of these dudes are ready to get back. They feel like they were cheated. They feel like they were robbed. So it's good to hear our leaders say what they said. And I'm telling you, this upcoming season, I believe we're going to see a more vocal Jalen Hurts. I just honestly do. And I don't think nothing's wrong with it. I think we're going to see a more vocal him. He's going to be more authentically himself, I believe. Sometimes he took a step back because... No, he he didn't want to put too much pressure on the on the other players. I, I believe we're going to see a little bit more of Jalen Hurts' personality, like when he was mic'd up at the Pro Bowl. Remember that? Uh, I believe it was the first Kelly Green. 
He was mic'd up against the uh, Miami Dolphins. I think we're going to see more of that from Jalen Hurts. And again, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at it at all. But hey, man, what do you think? And how do you feel about the news today? AJ Brown, Jalen Hurts, Hassan Reddick, all this good stuff. But this is Eagle Al. 